I am not exaggerating when I tell you that anyone in IT, anyone at all interested in information technology needs to understand the IPv4 addressing basics and probably even beyond, as we'll do together. IPv4 addresses are quite recognizable now, even to those that aren't in IT. They're so predominant. Here's an example, 192.168.1.100. And this might be an address you see in a small office home office, as the 192.168 range is private IP address space that is often used in the small office or home office environment. It's important to realize that this dotted decimal notation is easy for us to work with as humans, but there's actually 32 bits, 32 bits uh, meaning zeros and one settings inside the address. So in the first, what we call octet are eight bits, then in the second octet are eight bits, then in the third octet, the eight bits, and then in the fourth octet, the eight bits. So there are eight bit settings in each of these divisions. And if we multiply the four of them that exist times eight, there's our 32 bit address. Again, we like to call it dotted decimal notation, the notation you see here, because it's so easy for us to work with. But the computer, as you might guess, is actually working with the 32 bits that make up the address. Now, an address isn't in existence by itself, is it? We love and we need to pair the address on our machine with an IPv4 subnet mask. The subnet mask is also in dotted decimal notation. It is also 32 bits in length. But what's its job? Well, it's very simple. The job of the subnet mask is to indicate which of those 32 bits in the address identify a network and which of those 32 bits in the IPv4 address identify a host on that network. And in this example, it's very simple. Notice that the 255, 255, 255 indicates that the network is 192.168.1. And the fourth octet, the 100 in decimal, that's the host identification portion. Notice that it coordinates to the zero in the subnet mask. So we just learned that in the IPv4 subnet mask, when the bits are set to on or a one, and we have all of them set in the first octet, and all of them set in the second octet, and all of them set in the third octet, when this happens, that's an indicator of the network portion of the address. Those bits that are set to zero in the subnet mask coordinate up to the IP address to which of those bits identify a host on that network. Now, the other piece of information I want to share with you in this just basic intro to IPv4 addressing is the fact that when the v4 addressing was invented, they organized it into address classes. And they took the first bit, the very first bit, the leftmost bit in those 32 bits, and they preset it to zero as an identifier for a class A address. How does this work out in dotted decimal? Well, it means that the first octet will be a decimal from one to 127. The class B address space, they took the high order bits and forced them to one zero. Therefore, a class B address will have a initial decimal value in that first octet of 128 through 191. The class C, yes, the first three bits are set to 110, giving us 192 to 223. So think about that 192 address that we were just working with. It is a class C IPv4 address. And finally, the class D, set to 1110 for the first four bits. And we have a decimal value then of 224 to 239. And these are very special IPv4 addresses that are used to make multicast function. And we'll be sharing more information on multicast with you in future videos, as you might guess. 
So even though we're just scratching the surface here, just covering the basics, you've already seen that there's quite a bit of information. This is a video that you may want to watch more than once. You may want to make flashcards based on the information in this video. Well, I hope you're going to join me for the next video where we'll take it a step further with our understanding of these interesting 32-bit IPv4 addresses.